Welcome to the Amelia number 28. I'm Bill Rothermel. My co-host with me today, the legendary Justin Bell. I'm going to set you up for something. I, I, for, for failure, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> We're here on the field, and I think this is kind of especially ironic since you raced and won at Le Mans. Yep. Here we are at the Le Mans class. And we have five pretty incredible cars to talk about, which were Le Mans winners that are behind us. Yeah, I was talking to someone last night about what Le Mans means. And it is, it's a hundred years this year since the first running of that amazing race. And someone said to me, why did that race, why has that race captured the imagination? And I think it really, every decade has resonated with a fan base because the the speeds, the fact that you're out on the open road in a French village, um, you know, just two hours from Paris. It, it really did capture the bravery of the men and women that drove, the intensity of the challenge that everyone had to go through. Le Mans just going round the clock. Uh, you know, it may be 24 hours, but it's a whole lifetime that they experience. And wouldn't you also say perhaps it's endurance racing in general because it is that. How long can you maintain not only the car, the mechanics, the physical stamina, the mental stamina. I mean, you've been in the car. Yeah. You understand what it's like. It's not a ride around the track. I mean, you're no. at the edge for hours at a time, and then you suddenly say, okay, I'm, I'm going to send off to the next person. Yeah. But you're exhausted. But you're ready totally. yet to get back out there again. Am yeah, I, I mean, the drivers now are super athletes. But let's go back to 1953 when this car, this C-Type one, Le Mans, I mean, there would have just been two drivers, <clears throat> incredibly physically demanding. Yes, the cars weren't as demanding to drive. They, they didn't have any ground effect, downforce. Right. They, the right. tires had no grip. But just being physically out there with you know open top that i don't think that screen would stop much at 100 plus miles an hour this is the first car to average over 100 miles an hour just a shy of 105 over 24 hours you know when you change you had center lock wheels there you know not you just the I mean, knock off knock off with Spin the little baby little hammer. tires like yeah. this and just the way the cars would slide through the corners it's very magical and i think that's what got the fans it was man against machine and just the track you have to beat Lasarth to win it. That may also be why it's so compelling for people, even to this day, because then it was man against machine, yeah. so to speak, and against the environment. But today you have these cars with these with this incredible technology, yeah. with ground effects and things yeah. like that, that literally suck to the track. Literally do, yes. But you have to drive it completely differently than yeah. the way you drive a car like this. Yeah. My predecessors, and even as my dad will say, you know, who first went to Le Mans in 1970 in a Ferrari, those guys, you know, they did it very differently back then. I mean, it was, the pits were so rudimentary. We always joke about the Le Mans uh, pits. The, you just go and pee out the back of the pits. It was revolting. It's, it, was, it was like you had, you know, with the Bentley boys, these guys had come back from World War II with, you know, with money and, and the passion to take yes. risks. Yes. What was driving a race car around a village in France at 200 and 100 plus miles an hour then when you've been flying fighter planes in the war? Very good analogy. So let's just, let's go and, uh, you know, chase pretty women and drive fast cars at Le Mans. Sign and it worked. It and it worked. Yeah, right, exactly. And then, of course, just a couple of years later, the, I mean, to go from the C-type to the D-type, I mean. Which, you, which actually became the basis of the E-type. Yeah. Which I think, when you look at the car, when you, it has that, uh, the big enveloping kind of a body, just like an E-type yeah. does, with the hood going forward. But that was designed so they could access the car in the pits. Yeah. Uh, when the car came in, they didn't have time to tear a car apart. And they needed quick access under the hood. And of course, this that is, won it in '56. That's correct. That's what's wild. Two Le Mans winners in a row, and then this incredible the iconic, Ford GT. The iconic Ford GT. Most everybody has seen Ford versus Ferrari. Rob, jump so you in understand here a second. The importance. And I tell you what, Rob Kaufman, if you could have been out there in period, I know you would have done, right? Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. It's, it's still go 200 miles an hour. It's pretty 200 cool. miles an hour. And this. This was the winner from which year? 66. And for the people who see the Ford Ferrari movie, this is the Bruce McLaren, the guys who won, not Ken Miles, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it is something about when you see, especially for you, you see the evolution of technology. There's a part of me 
Rob, that would have loved to have driven a C-Type. You know, just jump in and out, no seat belts, just, <laughs> just in the open air until things went wrong. Well, I'm not sure these things are a heck of a lot better. I mean, it, there's no roll bar still. The fuel cells don't have any bladders. I mean, this was still a pretty risky period. So. It really, but the but speeds you, have got up. you vintage race also. Well, I was a race with quotes. I mean, you got to remember, especially a car like these, you know, it's to get out and have people enjoy them and hear them run. But to try to go, you know, we've done in modern yeah. cars, you know, 10 tenths is not a very smart thing for yourself or for the car. Yeah. But it's still good fun to get them out. Well, we're so happy you're out here with this. It Thank is you. gorgeous. And then you time, time jump a little bit more. One more time. And now we're looking at a 250 LM. Thank you, Rob. Looking at a 250 LM. And this was the winner in 1965, I believe yeah. was correct. Yeah, as we were wow. told. So a real time capsule looking down this line. And a, the kind of things you'll only get to see at one place here at the Amelia. Yep. So Le Mans, you just brought up Ford versus Ferrari a bit, you know, it, it really is an iconic movie that has helped explain in the modern era what the old era was like. And just as an example, my dad, you know, has raced there 25 times. We had family members who go, I get it now, once they saw the movie. Isn't that so stupid? You know, they're like, oh, thanks to that's Hollywood. What you did. Thanks to Hollywood. <laughs> and it's really great because it also, you know, the theme here has been so much, you know, introducing young people to driving. But what better way? than doing it through pop culture. And that's why, I mean, Rush, Ford vs. Ferrari, Steve McQueen's Le Mans movies, all these, actually, well, as purists, sometimes we can find fault with the details. The overall passion, the overall story arc is compelling. It's, it's right, and it's true. It's true. I mean, there's a little bit of Hollywood magic. Yeah, but for like, the most like Enzo part, Ferrari never went to a race. So he never stood on the balcony and looked down and shouted at, you know, Henry Ford. However, Edsel Ford, he didn't do that but it made for good TV. It sure did. Well, join us here at the Amelia. We'll be here all day. And remember, the awards ceremony is at 2 o'clock today, and we'll uh, be with you throughout the morning uh, visiting various classes of cars. Uh, we have uh, an interview with Mikhail Haggerty. You do? We're going to have a parade of Buicks to celebrate the Buick anniversary. Electric cars. Electric cars on parade. It's going to be a fun-filled and a busy morning, so stick with us. We'll be back in a few.